Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Kaba Ilco number 997PA. This is a nickel-plated key blank, a classic Yale bow on the key blank. A 997 is going to be certainly a reference to the type of blank that we're dealing with here. And the PA is going to tell us a bit about the keyway. Now, in the Yale catalog, they do list, uh, and I'll show you in a moment, they do list some of their keyways and the multiplex systems. But Yale's been manufacturing this material since the second half of the 19th century in terms of um, pin tumbler style cylinders. And while they have certainly changed over the decades, um, they have a hundred and a hundred, a century plus decades worth of history behind them in terms of the generation of different keyways. So unfortunately, I wish there was a single source, as there is for Yale's sister company, Corbin Ruswin, uh, a Yale document that gives us the living history of all keyways. And there is for Corbin Ruswin. It's called the Cylinder Manual, I think it's what it's called, which you can get to from the manufacturer's link in our site, Corbin Ruswin. Look for a document titled Cylinder Manual, and it will be there, at least one, two copies of it at this time. Nickel plated key blank, okay? Give you a couple basic dimensional properties, then we'll switch to the screen view. The height of the blade, the blade height, 0.33, right on the nose, 0.33. Now the distance from the shoulder stop to the flat, where that basically breaks, I'd say that that dimension would be right at about 1.1 1. Uh, 1 inch. 1.1 1. 1 from the shoulder stop right to the tip right here. 1.1 1. 1 inch. Okay. There you go. Let's switch to the screen view and take a closer look at some supporting documentation. Okay, so here's the item that we're looking at. 997 PA key blank. So not much to see here. By the time you're looking at this video, there will probably be photographs uploaded. There is a link here to the manufacturer's page, <clears throat> and that will allow us to get to the key blank catalog. And let's fire that up. Now in section two is where you'll find what they call the North American cylinders, and that's where your Yales, your Sergeant, Corbin Ruswin, and all other companies like that are listed. We'll do a find function on our keyboard for control, uh, control F. Let's type in 997 PA, and that's very handy because it will allow you to index the document and then find all other instances of that 997 PA in the book. Uh, turns out there's only two. So the second one is a cross-reference between an Ilco part number and the Taylor part number 6PA is what that Taylor part number would be. Now the first instance is in the catalog, section 2, page 72, is where you can see the 997 PA. Not much to say about that in the sense of it apparently does not participate in a multiplex structure, that 997 keyway. Um, and again, I don't know, you know, a substantial amount of background information on Yale keyways. Um, but looking at the fact that it doesn't participate in a multiplex structure tells me that it's just simply likely a, obviously, I would, I'm, I'm concluding it's a simplex keyway, meaning it doesn't participate or share any commonalities with other keyways. What I can tell you, though, is when you are looking at this profile right here, what you're looking at is what you would see when you look down into the cylinder. So I'm going to rotate that document so we can see it. Now this view is what you're looking at when you look down into the cylinder. When you look at the tip of the key, it's going to look symmetrically opposite of this. So remember, this is the broaching in the cylinder plug. You're, you're using this catalog most likely to determine if this is the right keyway or the key blank for your keyway. So this is what the broaching in the cylinder looks like. 
Okay, not when you're looking at the tip of the key, but from the bow down towards the tip. So in your mind's eye, you'll have to imagine or reverse that. Okay, so a handy way to be able to look at that. Now, this catalog is certainly not, you know, comprehensive of having every keyway of every manufacturer ever. They obviously only make the ones that are common, you know, that they can justify selling, manufacturing and selling. So you're going to be missing certainly lots of keyways in this document from Kaba Ilko, but you can always use it to eliminate what it's not. If you can't find what it is, at least you can use the book to eliminate pretty well what it's not. Okay, That's a very valuable use of the Kaba Ilko key blank catalog. It's alphabetical, so if we get to the beginning of the fuchsia section, section two, you know, you'll see it starts at the beginning of the alphabet. You can get down and scroll to wherever you need to be. Obviously, you know, quite a common key blank would be by Schlage. You'll just get into the Schlage area, you know, etc. whatever it may be. They've even still manufacture some of these wafer locks. Wafer locks are interesting. They were incredibly common. I don't know if they were in the 1930s. I know they were in the 1950s, that's for sure. Maybe the 1940s. I have somewhat been led to believe that they're actually still manufactured and that they're shipped down to Central America. Um, I don't know that from Schlage if they still make them, but you can't buy them new in the United States, that I know. And they've been discontinued for many, many, many years. Um, I've never learned, I never taught myself how to key these, uh, but I do have a manual. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about Schlage wafer locks in this Kaba catalog, uh, video, but there is a manual on how to rekey these. The principle governing master keying these is called positional master keying. Um, and it's under the Schlage uh, page. If you get to the manufacturer's page and go to Schlage, you'll find a manual on how to key um, wafer locks. Okay. Now, talking about Yale, manufacturer's page, go to Yale, and you will find a lot of Yale information. I've already pulled up the catalog from their cylinders and keying manual section, and they do show some common keyways. You know, their standard keyway is going to be the E1R. It's called a para keyway, or para, however you want to pronounce it. It's a simplex keyway. It stands alone um, and is para because it's paracentric. Para or para, paracentric. That means that the wards of the keyway, of the broaching, cross the vertical center line multiple times. A paracentric centric keyway is a very handy design because it does increase the security of the cylinder and you'll notice that many keyways are paracentric. Uh, low security material will not, will not be paracentric, meaning it won't zigzag across the vertical center line very much. What's interesting though is that this key blank is a PA um, and they obviously have other keyways that have A involved, a GA, a TA, an SA. And we've done work in other keyways as well. We just did some TA cylinders. Oh, a client that we're, it's ongoing now. They do all large format Yale uh, interchangeable or removable corn, a TA keyway. And we've done, um, there's a large, um, you know, agricultural uh corporation that has installations everywhere in the world and this one was in Iowa and they have uh, whatever keyway it was from Yale an unusual not restricted but an unusual keyway I forget it was in the S family somewhere the fact that this P has an A in it tells me that there may be a P family uh, and it may look something like this but I don't know that for sure I'm pretty confident it's not a restricted keyway so a call to the factory would would it would you know finding out would be just a matter of calling the factory to find out if this PA is simplex uh, or if it's part of a multiplex structure. Okay, pretty handy document. The key manual, cylinders and keying manual manual from Yale. Speaking about Yale, since we are talking about Yale, you're looking for a Yale item manufactured by Cobb Ilko. You might be interested in the Yale ca uh, page. We have. A serious quantity of incredibly old catalogs. If you want to see what Yale made in 1897, there's your catalog. If you want to see something a bit more current, well, there's the current catalog. 
Other encyclopedic documents are here, such as just the cylinders and keying manual. Keyways hierarchy. I did not know I had that. Okay, so not too much here. It just, yeah, just doesn't tell us very much. It's the G family of key blanks. The bow that you have, this round bow, is the standard bow. They call it an R bow. Um, I believe the A bow is used in security work or restricted work. And the F bow is common for control blanks. I think that's what that boils down to. Okay, very handy. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, nickel plated key blank, very typical, very common. Nickel plating is nice when you are trying to impression a key. You can file off the top of that key and you'll get a different look, a different color of base material. Below the nickel plating obviously is there for corrosion resistance. I can tell you that in three decades of cutting Kaba Ilko blanks, I can't imagine how many tens of thousands of blanks that I've cut. There has only been one key blank that I'm pretty sure was a factory defect. Um, and I say that because it's improbable how tiny that percentage of factory failure is. It's improbable. The key blank was definitely incorrect because when I measured from the register groove down to the bottom of the down to the root of the key, it was clearly about five thousandths off, and that's way enough for your key blank not to work. Okay, so when I was cutting my key and registering from the root. I was getting my cuts too shallow and when I measured the register groove to the bottom of the root with my caliper against all of the other key blanks, you know, the the 50 the box of 50 others, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so many were the same size and one was one was a bit shy. So it's just amazing to me how uh, incredibly accurate Kaba Ilko is. There's a person there in technical support when it comes to cylinders who is an incredibly helpful resource. And to that gentleman, I say thank you very much for helping. Any questions? And they're sold as each, by the way. You can buy any quantity you want. This client happened to order five. Any questions on the Kaba Ilko 997 PA key blank or any other Kaba Ilko product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. If you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please click subscribe as well and even share the video with someone that you know. And if you have any questions for a future video, please send them our way and we will make every attempt to oblige. And thank you very much.